All right, so this video is dedicated to trying to understand what entropy is, kind of at a very basic level. Now, entropy, probably what you've been told before as an idea of explaining what it is, is that you've been told to the effect that it is basically a measure of disorder, okay? We can't say that because if we just said that something is a matter of disorder, how do we quantify disorder? We can't say walk into a room and say, this room has a disorder of 17 joules. There's no way for us to quantify that, okay? So we wanna to get to a more basic level of what entropy is. How do we define entropy, okay? So entropy uh, gives us the ability to def uh, define this idea of disorder. But what we're going to see is that our entropy is proportional to the number of equivalent ways <coughs> a system can be organized okay, or distributed. Okay, so the equivalent ways, which means that we haven't changed energy, we haven't changed any other aspect of it, uh, but there are different ways that we can do that. So the more ways we can distribute maybe energy, the greater the entropy. Okay, so let's look at an example of this. Let's go ahead and just say we have two atoms, okay, with a total of three kilojoules of energy. Okay, and let's say this must be distributed over one kilojoule uh, energy gaps. So we'd have zero, one, two, three kilojoules of energy. Okay, well we have the possibility to have one of our atoms sit at zero kilojoules, right? The other one sit at three. Okay, and then we can also have the possibility where we have one of them sit at two, okay, and one sit at one. Okay, these would really be the only two ways that we can distribute them, right? If this if this atom's up here and this atom's down here, it's still equivalent. Okay, we haven't just changed the way that our energy is being distributed. So we have basically two ways that we can distribute energy equivalently. We have an increase the total energy or decrease the total energy. Our total energy is still three. Now what happens if we have instead, let's say we have two atoms with a total energy of four kilojoules, okay? So again, we're gonna do with individual one kilojoule of energy gaps that they can exist at, they're, quant they're quantized there. So again, we can have one of them sitting at zero, okay, maybe another one sitting at four for a total of four, okay. We can also see that we can distribute one and three, okay, as our two possible energies. But now we also have one, po one more possible energy uh, distribution that we can have, one of them at two and the other one at two, okay. So now we see that we have three ways that we can distribute our energy here, right? Here, there's only two ways that we can distribute energy equivalently. We haven't changed the amount of energy available. Here we have three. So we would say this system at the higher energy has greater entropy, more ways we can distribute it. Okay, I only gave the example of energy, but we can also talk about the way that, or the, the way that um, molecules can move, uh, the way that they can, they're restricted in movement. Okay, the energies that they have, the potential energies they have, the bonds they have. There's a lot of different things that come into play when we're talking about entropy. But hopefully this gives us a good clarification of how we're thinking about entropy. This idea of never equivalent ways that we can organize or distribute uh, our molecules or particles within a system. So we're going to talk more about the details of this class, but hope this gives you a good introduction.